this fairly innocuous piece of land behind me there, just rough scrub land, looks like nothing, but it was once very important. It was described in the past as having one of the two greatest fairs in the whole of England on that land. As it was common land, it used to be visited quite a lot in the 70s and 80s by people with metal detectors. Here we've got an information board that tells us all about this site. The origins of it, Middle Ages, 18th century, 19th century, 20th century, present day. There is a footpath over it, but that's about it. Now there was some phenomenal finds came off this site. Um, but unfortunately, about 20 odd years ago, there was a legal challenge to the status of the land and all that stopped. There's no doubt still loads of good finds there, but see that sign there? It's one of the signs that went up. Private land, no metal detectors. I think that kind of sums it up. That tells you where the landowner's coming from. Just in case you missed that sign, there's another one on the gate as well. <laughs> so you're under no illusions that you're not welcome. Although we're stuck for metal detecting here, people would have come from all over to visit this site. And now we're reduced to looking for the places where they camped, where they stayed overnight, where they looked after the livestock. And in some of those places, we can still make great finds. Unfortunately, I personally haven't been lucky enough to go on this site. I got into metal detecting way too late. I suppose it could go on in a night, but given the landowner's hatred of metal detectors, it's probably not a good idea because you'll end up in court. With the weather being the way it is, it's winter here now in England, and also the pressures of my work, I haven't been able to get out myself very much, but a lot of people have all around the world. They've been sending me some great videos of stuff they've been finding lately, and also stuff they've found in the past. So keep your eye on these, there's some great finds coming up. Now then, I bet there's quite a lot of people watching this who are thinking, I just wish that fat fool would shut his stupid face. All I want to see is the finds. Here they are. Welcome to part six. Hi there, my name is Lee Treasure Hunter Martin from the Metal Detecting Worldwide group on Facebook and my YouTube channel name is Rockphonic1 this is my find to show it's a 17th to 18th post medieval seal matrix still spins around and I found it with the gold max power it was about 5 to 6 inches down on pasture land thank you for watching, bye Hello everyone, it's Ashaniah from YouTube. Uh, my find of the month this month is a hammered coin. It's uh, Spanish two rails, uh, dates from 1469 to 1504. It's quite heavily clipped and it's been holed as well. I think the uh, plough's taken a chunk out of it. But uh, it was the first hammered coin that I found and that was back in October in 2012. It's definitely one of my favourite coins and uh, one I'll be keeping in the collection for some time. Uh, it's found just outside Chester using the Garrett Ace 250 at the time um, on stubble and it was about two to three inches down. So I hope you enjoy that and we'll see you on the next one. Well hey guys, Keithy Six here of Metal Detecting in Alaska and uh, I wanted to share with you my 1939 Univex 8mm camera. Uh, I found this with my Fisher Gold Bug and it was buried in a coffee can under a pine tree near an old prospector's cabin here in Fairbanks and uh, I did have a roll of film just wish I could see what was on it alright thanks I'll show some pictures of what this looked like brand new
Hi everybody, um, bought a metal detector last year, a Garrett 250 Ace. Uh, I've only had the um, opportunity to use it just about two weeks ago, went out for the first time. I was lucky enough to find um, silver hammered Richard II half groat. And that was found at Aldermaston in pasture land. Thanks for watching. Hello, all you metal detectors around the world. My name is John. My YouTube name is Jet Ski John 2006. This is my find a Roman silver denarius coin, which is Septimus Severus, dated 193 to 211 AD. Right, I believe this emperor died in February of natural causes just outside York which is not far from where I found this coin uh, I'd only been metal detecting a few months and got invited to a dig just outside York bear in mind I'd only found things like pennies and stuff before then I got a signal in plough fields with my Garrett Ace 250 looked on the top and this coin was looking at me so there you go on the other side he's holding cornopia and corn ears and by the way, I'd like to thank uh, Ponguru for putting all these videos together and your hard work doing it. Keep up, keep up the good work and hopefully look forward to seeing you next one. Bye for now. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ian, otherwise known as Detecting Devon. Um, this is an entry for Richard's or Ponguru's worldwide metal detecting finds. I've been trying to find something worthy of going on for a while now, but it's been... Um, boring junk and sixpences. So this is mine, it's a uh, 1914 um, Athletes Volunteer Force badge. Uh, they were issued um, to people during World War One, and they were sort of a home guard people, the, the people who were issued with these. Uh, it's in fairly good condition really but um, it'd be nice to get a better one. They're quite rare, I've never seen one before so um, that's why I thought it was worthy of going on anyway. So uh, it was found about six inches down with the Mind Lab E-Track uh, all standard and it was found on a normal field uh, to view my channel it's Detecting Devon and thanks Richard, bye because while I've been out there doing this now and again one of these little babies pop up <laughs> ah, nice little half sovereigns Yes, indeedy. Ooh. And there's nothing like a bit of gold. A bit of silver's all right, but when you pull one of these out, you know you've been there. <laughs> Brilliant. Fabulous little coins there. Gold coins. Few bob there. Even scrap value, there's a few bob there in gold, I'll tell you. Thanks for watching. This is a medieval or Roman spindle whirl. Found this a while ago, but when I was out last night, I found that one. I haven't cleaned it yet, and I'm hoping that this possibly will be my best spindle whirl yet. It looks like it's got some beautiful detail on it, so I'll get it cleaned up and we'll find out. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, that's it all cleaned up. And it is indeed a beauty. That's definitely the best one I've found. It's made of lead, and this was used to spin yarn. If you search YouTube, you'll find videos of people using spindle whirls. That's a, a really nice find. It was found approximately 12 to 13 inches deep. It was lying flat, and that was on pasture with the Mine Lab e track Hello everyone, this is Mick, Finders Keepers, formerly Mr. Mick, 123M. And what you're looking at is my oldest find to date. It was found in a hole whilst using a Garrett Ace 250, looking for a metal object, and this turned up. It's a piece of flint, and it's been worked. It's got a very sharp edge. I took it to my local FLO officer, and as you can see from the report, it dates 8300 BC. 800 BC 
it's had three flakes removed to form the sharp edge uh, and it's been napped or flaked to make it such such a way thanks for watching check out all my other finds at Mick Finders Keepers My name is Andre and I live in the Netherlands. My YouTube name is The Dutch Treasure and I'd like to show you this coin I found. It's a silver coin. It's dated 1573 and it's a German Thaler coin. Uh, on one side you see Count August and just to give you a, uh, a sense how big this coin is, I put a uh, a British one pound coin right next to it there it is so you can see it's a pretty big coin I found this coin in the eastern part of the Netherlands a couple of years ago with a laser B1 the coin was pretty deep, I think 9-10 inches and it's really a find of a lifetime. Now I will show you the other side that has much more, even more detail than this side. Here is a look on the other side. It's got some beautiful detail. I hope you can see it. So I hope you like this find and have a look at my YouTube channel until next time from the Netherlands. Bye! To everybody watching this episode, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for appreciating. If you've liked it, click the like button. Check out the channels of everybody who submitted a video for this episode. Give their videos a like. Also, subscribe to them if you're into metal detecting. Well, I suppose you are into metal detecting if you're watching this video. So they should pick up a few subscribers as well, which would help their channel. That would be spot on. If you want to submit a video for this series, all you need to do is make a short video, similar to the ones in this video, up to a minute long or thereabouts, explaining what you found, where you found it, what you found it with, and put that on your channel. You can make it unlisted if you don't want it to show on your channel, and then send me the link. You can also send me the link of videos you've got hosted elsewhere. As long as I've got the website address, where the video is hosted, I can download it and use it in this series. Further details are in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube and also will follow at the end of this video. Thanks for watching, look forward to seeing you in part 7. In part 5, I included a news article on a guy who found a great big gold nugget, that was awesome, in Australia. To my knowledge, there's nothing of that sort of magnitude happened to include in this video, but there is some quite important news this, there is some quite important news this week, and that is that the Pope is resigning. News sources are saying that it's because he's old and frail, um, but I have it on good authority that he's resigning to spend more time metal detecting. He was out detecting a few years ago, just outside of Colchester, with Chicago Ron, and although the Pope Mobile did get stuck in a muddy gateway, he had a great time, and that really got him into the hobby. Unfortunately, the Pontiff went for a really heavy detector. He bought himself an E-Track with an 18-inch coil. He really wanted to get down to those Roman remains around Rome, Naples, Vesuvius, and that's led to him being pretty frail, you know, he's, his muscles are starting to go wielding that thing. He did get in touch a while back, possibly this time last year, and he was asking about harnesses, and I recommended a harness for him with a bungee. You know, it would have really taken the weight off those old shoulders, but as far as I know, he didn't buy one. I 
told them to protect us, sold them. I've got one, they're great. You know, I'm pretty strong. But the E-Track is a heavy machine. So now the Pope's looking for a new detector. Um, if he's listening, Pope, if you're watching this, personally, I would recommend the XP Deus. It's very light. There's a lot of the old fellas use them. And um, I'm not a religious person, but if you're ever over in the UK, you're quite welcome to come out with me anytime. So, best of luck, outgoing Pope. Best of luck, incoming Pope. Don't know who it's going to be yet, but there'll no doubt be plenty of merchandise. I would personally like to see some Pope soap and Pope on a rope. I remember when I was in Italy about 20 odd years ago with the college, there was street vendors selling flick knives with a picture of John Paul II on. Killing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Once again, I greatly appreciate... I don't greatly appreciate the bloody planes flying overhead. How are you, man? To the viewers... Oh, uh,